What's up and welcome to the second video in our geometric poster design series. We're gonna be making this awesome poster and I'm bringing you through all of the steps. Today, we're talking about color and contrast. I personally struggle with color. It's just not my area of specialty. Some people love it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring you through a really great tool that Adobe provides that's gonna help you learn how to use color really well. I'm also gonna show you some tools that you can use in Adobe Illustrator and give you some things that you should never do when it comes to color. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. All right, so here we are in Adobe Illustrator. And if you want to go ahead and download this file, it's gonna be in the description of this video. It'll help you follow along. I've kind of got things built out for you, so it'll be nice and easy. But if you look up here, we've got a sample color palette. This is actually one that I'm gonna be using for my poster design. But because I don't want you to just have the same thing as me, you're gonna be creating your own color palette in this video that you're gonna use for your poster design. So down here is where I'm gonna show you how to add your color palette to these different shapes. We're gonna look at the eyedropper tool. Uh, before before we do, I want to show you a few color tools that are in Illustrator. So you have the swatches panel over here, which are different colors that are just kind of by default in Illustrator. You also have the color panel, which is really helpful because you can change the values and see some of the more technical parts of your colors. And the other thing is libraries. So libraries are really great because you can share libraries with different people. Uh, and it's also something if you're working for a client, you can drop their logo, their brand colors, any elements they have, and you can use this across all of your Adobe products. So it's super helpful. And we're also gonna use this to bring in colors from an awesome online color picker tool that Adobe has for us. All right, so here we are in Adobe Color. So if you go to color.adobe.com slash explore, you'll get this page. Uh, I'm gonna go over here to view. Instead of all sources, I'm gonna change it to color themes most popular. So these are gonna show us some popular color themes that we have. And what's cool about this is we can add this directly to that library that I just mentioned, and it'll bring it in to our programs. So uh, let's see, one that might look good. I'm gonna like, I like this kind of earth tones right here. So what I'll do is I'll click on this and click add to library. So when you add it to library, it's actually gonna bring it in Adobe Illustrator, which is really cool. All right, so here you can see that in Illustrator, we've actually brought this template in easy peasy, just that button click, and it's already into our program. So what I can do is select this shape, and then if I click on my green, kind of this tan, darker tan, orange, and red, it'll bring it all here right into my program, which is pretty cool. So now these are in here, what I wanna do is, I don't usually work so much from libraries and I'm gonna do something different and I'll show you why. So if I select all of these shapes and then down here in my swatches, I click this little folder icon, it'll create a new color group. And one thing I wanna make sure you have clicked on is convert process to global. And we'll just call this palette, all right? And so now what's really neat about this is you can see these little corner marks here. And what's helpful is if you are gonna wanna adjust your colors as you go, so say later on the line, you find this green is maybe a little too army green, you want it to be a little lighter. You can double click on this and adjust it, and it's going to adjust that green within your artwork. And what's cool is if you have that green in 100 places, as long as you've used this swatch, it'll adjust it in all those spots too. I'm gonna keep it how it is for now. Uh, and the last thing I'm gonna show you here is how to use the eyedropper tool. And so eyedropper tool is really helpful uh, because you wanna make sure that you can pull colors from anywhere on your board if you wanna adjust them on the fly. Click the eye button and you can eyedrop from any other shape on the board. Here we go. So that's an easy way to pull in colors. And the last thing I'm gonna show you is really, really important, and that is contrast. So it's important to make sure that when colors are on top of each other, they have good contrast. So it's a good thing to check. Here, the contrast is not great. So you just wanna make sure that you're aware of how your colors contrast. So when you're using them next to each other, you don't have something weird happening. And by weird, I'm gonna show you what I mean. So if I make this, this really bright red in my default and this really bright green, what happens when I put these over each other is this horrible effect that in graphic design is called vibrating. So if you look, these colors really do, that's the best word to describe it, especially where they touch, there's almost like this vibration happening and it's just not appealing to the eye. I mean, even if it's that surrounded by that green or the other way around, it looks horrible. And so what you wanna do is make sure that you're aware of how your colors contrast and make sure that you don't have any vibrating colors. Because if you do, it's gonna just be terrible to look at uh, and it'll totally steal from your design. So you wanna make sure that as you're working with your colors, everything has good contrast between them so that you can use them uh, in the composition together. 
So that is using color and contrast in Adobe Illustrator. If you liked the video, feel free to like. If you want even more videos, go ahead and subscribe because I post new content every single week. Also, if you have anything that you want to learn when it comes to Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, or After Effects, drop a comment below and I would love to make a video that caters to something that you're interested in learning. Uh, also, our next video in this series is going to be talking about using the text tool and the transform tool, both really important. So you don't want to miss it as we move towards our geometric poster design. I'll see you in the next one.